More passengers on that cruise ship in Japan are testing positive for COVID-19. Health officials report 88 new cases today, including at least one Canadian. A plane is on its way to bring home Canadians who so far haven't been infected. They've been under quarantine on the Diamond Princess for nearly two weeks. As Mike Armstrong explains, it was supposed to contain the spread, but may have done the opposite. The Diamond Princess is being called a floating prison by passengers. It's being called something else by scientists, not a quarantine facility, but an incubator. About 10% of the ship has now contracted COVID-19. Something went wrong. This is a highly transmissible virus. And that's one of the things that's of concern. You amplify that when you put it in a closed space. Of the 3,700 people on the ship when the quarantine started, 542 have now tested positive. Among the latest, Montrealer Julien Bergeron. He's on the ship with his wife. Manon Trudel hasn't tested positive. They're going to be split up soon. Bergeron is supposed to be moved to a hospital. From the moment he leaves the room, Trudel says she has to restart 14 days of quarantine. Things are going from bad to worse. Healthy Canadians will be leaving the ship. The federal government says a repatriation flight is expected to leave Tokyo Thursday. Preparations are underway at the NAV Canada Centre in Cornwall, Ontario, where they'll be facing another 14-day quarantine. Fences are going up so they can get fresh air, but there's no contact with the public. We're expecting about 250 people, but the number tends to fluctuate all the time. Now, as was the case when Canadians were repatriated from China, everyone will be tested before they board the plane and when they arrive in Canada. Those first two flights were close to 400 people. None of them has tested positive. Despite that and repeated assurances from health officials... I'm concerned. I have kids here, you know. There is some nervousness in Cornwall. Terrified. I am talking to people. The town's mayor says she spent three intense days telling the public there's no danger, but part of the apprehension, she says, may be because the whole thing was sprung on her community without warning. Now, one thing the U.S. did that Canada isn't is bring back Diamond Princess passengers who tested positive. They brought back more than a dozen. Trudeau says the government should be bringing people like her husband home. They're desperate. She says the quarantine on the ship has been a failed improvisation. And she and her husband are starting to question whether they're going to get through this ordeal alive. Mike Armstrong, Global News, Montreal. The viral outbreak has now spread to more than 75,000 people globally. The death toll has hit a grim new milestone rising to more than 2,000. The vast majority of these cases remain in China, and that's where new measures are being introduced to further restrict the movement of tens of millions of people. As Crystal Gumansing reports, the World Health Organization is endorsing China's strategy. Trapped at home, Wuhan is a city of more than 11 million people, but all of those individuals have nowhere to go, nothing to do, and it's about to get worse. The 76-year-old says as the virus continues to spread, control measures are becoming more stringent. People cannot easily get in or out of the neighborhoods. The streets of Shanghai are also bare despite being home to more than 24 million people. Students here have been instructed to work online. Never before has a government imposed so many restrictions on the movement of people. But China is one of the world's most populous countries, gripped by a virus no one had heard of until recently. You can argue uh, whether those measures are excessive. There's an awful lot at stake here in terms of uh, public health and in terms of uh, not only the public health of China, but of, of all people in the world. While it appears the virus is most serious in individuals over 40 and those with pre-existing health conditions, little is known about it. At the moment, we don't have enough data on cases outside China to make a meaningful comparison on the severity of disease or the case fatality rate. We're following up with countries to get more information about what happens about each case and the outcome. Until there is hard data, different strategies are being tested. The right moves will only be determined after the outbreak is over. Crystal Gamansing, Global News, London.